the diamond sutra meditation your inner creativity meditation your inner creativity up to now up to now you have followed a certain pattern of life you thought in a certain way but now you need new glimpses into life be alert awake and arise a new horizon awaits you do not be slave to the mind mind is memory a psychological one a memory what is memory memory of your wounds mind continues to control your past and future just be aware of this whatsoever has been consumed by the conscious mind dissolves it is like you are eating food in preparation of the food we use oils body has a system of absorbing these food particles and in doing so it is converted into energy there are certain items which are not absorbed by the system they remain and whatsoever remain unutilized creates the problem memory is something like that which has not been utilized and it is a memory of your wounds mind continues to control your past and future just be aware of this what is the way then how does mind control you mind is very cunning it convinces you of its efficiency it communicates like an economist always remember one thing whenever you have two things to choose from always choose the new if you have chosen the moon then you are under the grip of the mind whenever you have a choice to make between the two things always choose the new choose the harder one choose the one that requires intelligence that requires awareness that requires your creativity between efficacy and awareness always choose awareness thus you will create a situation for meditation to happen whenever you choose the harder one where awareness is needed where intelligence is needed you are creating a situation for meditation to happen these are just the situation without which meditation cannot happen you are creating the situation not the meditation and once the situation is created the meditation happens spontaneously move from efficiency to creativity but in the west we are more interested in efficiency efficiency is mechanical and creativity is your very essence you are not here to be more and more efficient you are here to be creative to develop your creativity the more creative you are the more meditative you will be 
the more you will grow into awareness creativity is the quality that you bring to any activity creativity is the essence that you bring to the surface when you are engaging in a particular activity you are not doing anything mechanically creativity is your very essence you are here to be more not to be more efficient you are here to be more alive more intelligent more happy creativity is your essence always choose to be creative in anything you do this will unfold in meditation and when you are creative when you are paying attention to the creative instincts in you you can never remain sleepy alertness follows you and when you are alert small and insignificant things become secret then whatsoever you do it does not matter along with creativity alertness comes on to the surface bring your alertness in everything life will begin to unfold a new meaning it will give you a new vision even ordinary acts like cooking cleaning putting on your clothes arranging your wardrobes will become secret and it will become an act of meditation it will become like worship then you need not chant your scriptures you need not do anything just you are alert you are bringing your creativity in any act that you are doing and that act will become for a sacred and that will become your worship that will become your prayer then it is not important what you are doing what matters then will be how you are doing it if you are cleaning the floor or cooking like a robot a mechanical thing that you have to do then you will miss something something beautiful is missed then you waste those beautiful moments in cleaning by being mechanical about it cleaning the floor could be a great experience you can clean the floor singing and dancing when you are luminous with awareness while cleaning the floor or cooking or arranging your wardrobes you will feel something is happening within you when you are luminous with awareness there is alertness then even the act of cleaning the floor will become significant and you will feel a deep cleansing happening to you instead you will feel a deep inner cleansing deep inner cleansing is happening to you experiment with it i am not talking anything just theoretical when you walk sit or do anything let there be a continuous thread of awareness you are mindful and this is one of the quest answers that buddha gave to the philosopher who asked are you a philosopher or thinker 
Buddha responded, I am a physician. What do you do? inquired the philosopher. Buddha said, I sleep, I eat, I drink, I walk, I talk. The man responded, this is what we all do. But are you mindful of it? You do everything like a robot, but an awakened one does it with alertness and with alertness awareness comes in. Then whatsoever you are doing is not mechanical, instead it becomes an act of creativity and all that expresses your inner essence as creativity leads you to a state of meditativeness. Whether you work, sit, walk or do anything, let there be one continuous thread of awareness. Make your life more and more luminous with awareness. Let the flame of awareness be lit each moment. When you are walking in a dark cave or you are going through, going to a destination, you have to be constantly aware which turn you have to take now. If you have your GPS system on, you have to be very alert, listening to the instructions that is coming. But in meditation, the inner, the instructions comes from deep within. Let the flame of awareness be lit each moment. And that is your alertness. The cumulative effect of all this becomes a source of light. The cumulative effect of the moments of awareness is enlightenment, a light unto yourself. Then meditation will unfold your essential nature. It is an effort in the beginning, however it is not something that mind can achieve. All that falls within the domain of the mind cannot be meditation. Mind cannot capture the moments of meditativeness. Meditation begins where mind ceases. There is a particular couplet. Jab dil ko neend a jati hai aur roof bhi kuch gafil hoti hai phir main hi akela hota hoon aur yaar ki mehfil hoti hai. Jab dil ko neend a jati hai when heart goes to sleep. Jab dil ko neend a jati hai and the soul is also intoxicated. Ruby kuch gafil hoti hai. Phir mai hi akela hota hoon. Then I am all alone. Aur yaar ki mehfil hoti hai. Then there is the company of the beloved. The company of the master. Kal sahil walo se ro ro. Ye doobne wale kehte thi. Kal sahil walo se. Those who are standing on the shore, all these who were drowning, who were dissolving in the ocean of bliss, were pleading. Kal sahil walo se ro ro ye doobne wale kehte thi, jo maaj dubade tufaan ko. That wave that drowns, that dissolves the storm, 
the severest of storm alone is the shore jab dil ko neend aa jati hai aur roop bhi kuch gafil hoti hai when heart is put to sleep soul is intoxicated then i am all alone in the company i sojourn with my eternal beloved and verily a voice springs forth from within kal sahil walo se huru those who stand on the shore those who were dissolving into the vastness were pleading and telling them the secret that wave that moment that dissolves the severest of storm the vicissitudes in life that comes that vicissitude that is storm that wave that dissolves that particular circumstance and situation of converts it into bliss alone is the shore meditation is not an achievement it is your essential nature you have to recognize this within you have been carrying it within you for long it is your being it has nothing to do with doing it is a state of being it is your intrinsic nature it is your being a state of non doing you are not doing anything but something is happening generally people ask how they can meditate this is a normal question how they should meditate one should not ask this instead one should ask how to remain unoccupied how to remain unoccupied we are always in a state of doing this or that doing is the way of our life from doing you need to move to the state of being instead they should ask how to remain unoccupied meditation happens spontaneously just remain unoccupied when i say remain unoccupied i mean physically mentally or intellectually how that can be possible you watch yourself you sit on the chair but you are fidgety you cannot sit in a state of stillness like a statue i am speaking the session of the meditation is taking place live if you look at the video there is no movement in the eyes the hand wherever it is put it is there when there is a movement in the body it is a reflection of inner disturbance when there is no disturbance within there is no need to move the hand or feet or change the posture when buddha used to sleep anand asked him a question that i have watched you sleeping day in and day out every hour of the night but i have not seen you turning or twisting normally when you sleep 
your bed becomes a wrestling bout, a wrestling arena. Buddha responded and that response was beautiful. Body needs rest, mind is awake and aware. There is no disturbance. Body needs rest and when mind is disturbed, it affects the movement of the body. When I say that remain unoccupied, I am speaking. The speaking is happening through the vocal cord. The light is continuously flowing, converting the inner silence into the words Words are overflowing at a particular pitch. There is no need for to have any modulation. If that be necessary at any particular point in time, it will happen. If it be necessary to carry the pitch between the high and the low notes, if that be necessary it will happen, otherwise it is going at a constant pace. If you study the, the brain waves, there is delta beta and theta brain waves. In one, when the number of waves per second falls below four, you fall into a state of sleep. If it goes more than 12 or 14, then you will remain very active and you hyperactive. But if it is between 4 and 8, you cannot fall asleep, you cannot be hyperactive, you are just floating. You are in the center. You can keep on watching there will not be any movement. I can remain just like the statue. I recall an event, an anecdote that happened in the life of Nakshbandi Sheikh, Rabbar Dayal or Chacha Ji, whose birthday fell on 7th of October just recently. It happened once he was travelling in a car from one place to another and the car met an accident. He has his arm and the leg fractured. So in that situation the doctor used they want to keep your hand but the arm is straight. So they use the pieces of I scale like the wooden strips. They tie on top and below and bandage it so the hand remains or they suspend the hand and feet so that it will remain stretched, straight in one position. So when he was told that you have to keep your hand stretched and for that they will have to use the device that will help to keep your both arms stretched horizontal and there need not be any movement. He said, how long you have to keep this? He inquired from the doctor. How long you have to keep this? 
because the bone has a natural tendency of a to if it remains unmoved in a particular situation the joint naturally joins the doctors will know that so that is why they use the plaster and they, so that your hand remains in a particular position and it is not disturbed so the doctor said you have to keep at least 3 hours or so he said you don't need to do anything this hand will remain unmoved and when your time is over you let me know when your 3 hours are over you let me know what is that this reflex this reflects a state of non-doing. He is in a state of awareness. He is in a state when, when you are in a state of awareness, you are in a realm of being, not doing. And the hand remained like that. When I heard of this, you immediately know this is he went into the state of being and through keeping the hand both stretched. If you are asked to keep your hands stretched in a particular yoga posture or exercise, you want to know how much, how long it has to be and you cannot keep for more than one minute. Even that will become like eons and he did it for three hours and he up and told the physician that it will remain unmoved and when your time is over you tell me a state of non-doing I am I mean physically so physically there is no movement, mentally there is no need for any thoughts. There is one channel, light reflects, activates the inner silence and out of that silence are born certain words. The energy field assumes the form of words. Because the silence you cannot decipher. Silence is a different kind of a communion. For that you have to be much more alert and awake. So what does the master do? He converts that silence into words. Just as in the process of communication, I am speaking, it is analog. The system that I am using converts that analog into digital. It is all the sound waves travel in digital format. And when it reaches to your device, again that your device converts the digital into analog and you hear the analog. So it is the silence, the light first converts the silence into words and in a digital format the word reaches you and when these words reach you again it is converted into silence. So along with the words, you are hearing the silence and it is the silence which really works, not the words. Words are simple. They are the containers to carry the inner silence, the inner bliss. 
The whole lack of meditation requires how to remain unoccupied. So for that, the silence is being converted into the words. So when it reaches you, it keeps you bemused in a state of a discipline. How when I sit down in this company or listen to it, something begins to settle within the disturbance, the inner disturbance becomes less effective. Just listening to this, sitting in the company, Settle something within. This is the knack. On your own it is difficult. But in the company of the awakened one, it becomes natural. Because it is, the, in Sufi terminology, it is called the Tavachu, the energy flows. The whole knack of meditation requires how to remain unoccupied, that is all. Then nothing else is to be done. Meditation will happen on its own. Your energy moves naturally outwards through the act of thinking doing, seeing, etc. When you are sitting in this meditation session, the thinking ceases. There are moments when doing also ceases. You are thrown in a state of being. When you are not doing any of these acts, the energy does not move. This is why in some of the meditation techniques, they allow you to be active and all of a sudden you are asked to freeze. And when you freeze, the energy that was constantly being generated goes into the areas of your system where it is needed. When it is not moving, it suddenly moves towards the center and finally settles there, in the center. All doing is the way of moving outward. All non-doing is the way to move inwards. You can read the scriptures as an occupation as is normally done by the priests, you go to the mother and observe the children reading their scriptures. They are reading their scriptures, the body is constantly moving forward and backward or other directions. There is no difference between religious and secular occupations by nature is by nature man is blind and wants to be in a state of doing and when you move from the act of doing to being meditation begins to happen then you need not do anything just being, meditation will begin to happen.